Abraham experienced it and his name was changed. Sarah experienced it and she got laughter. Moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading. David experienced it and became God's beloved. Elijah experienced it and brought down fire. A savior has come to you. A healer has come to you. A deliverer has come to you. A redeemer has come to you. You will not miss your miracle. Now, it's your time. Experience the supernatural in this month's Global Crusade themed The Glorious Visitation of Christ Happening Live in Ghana. God is ready to move. Also featuring our ministers, church workers, and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest. The youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher heights with the Impact Academy. Join us from the 28th to 25th of April at Independence Square, Osu, Accra. The word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your people. Thank you for bringing us together for a good purpose. I will pray that that purpose will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Open the pages of the scriptures to your people. Help us, Lord, to understand. Grant us Christian experience based on your word in Jesus' name. And for those who are listening for the first time, we pray you grant them understanding as well. That this word will benefit everyone in Jesus' name. Pastors, leaders, workers, members, youths, children, we pray that your word will be a great profit for everyone. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're coming to John chapter 3. And today we're looking at verses 1 through to 8. We'll be looking at uh, the statements of the Lord and the teachings of the Lord from the gospel according to St. John. And today we come to the seventh study in this gospel according to saint john and from verse 1 chapter 3 tells us there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews the same came to jesus by night and said unto him rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from heaven come from god for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except god be with him Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, I said unto thee, ye must be born again. They went bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Those are the verses we're looking at today. We read about this man that came to the Lord Jesus Christ, his name Nicodemus. And it says, This man came in the night look at verse 1 again it says there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews was a leader among the jewish people and when we say ruler among the jewish people it was a leader in their synagogue it was a religious man 
a Pharisee very strict in religion. And yet, he came to the Lord Jesus Christ. He must have known that something was missing from what he had got. Religion, he got that, not enough. Tradition, he got that, not enough. And all the things that uh, the fathers had taught them, he got all that, not enough. Historical worship, he got all that, and he knew that that was not enough. And he said, I must go to Jesus. He's been hearing about Jesus Christ, and he's been hearing about the miracles that Jesus Christ performed. He came to one conclusion. He said, the same came to Jesus by night, verse 2, and said unto him, Rabbi. That's what Rabbi means, master. It means teacher. It means the one that propounds the truth and the one that establishes the word in the minds of the people. And so he recognized him, he recognized his office, he recognized his authority, he recognized his knowledge, and he recognized he was higher than himself. And so he said, Rabbi, master, teacher, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He said, I'm not the only one that know about this. We know. We Pharisees, we know. Although the other people were not willing to confess that. They were not willing to expose their understanding of who Jesus was. But this man came and he said, we know this, that thou art a teacher. Thou art a master. And you are not from our school. You're not from our training. You're not from our tradition. You're not from any place here. We know that you have come from God. And we've been talking about that, thinking about that, because we know this, that no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He actually had not said what he wanted. He had not revealed to Jesus why he came. But the Lord Jesus knows the hearts of all men. He knew his heart, and he knows our hearts today. If you come back to chapter 2, look at chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 25, the last verse there. And needed not that any man should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. He knew what was in the heart of this man Nicodemus when he came and that's why now he told him after all the appreciation we know that your teacher come from God after all the expression of his faith in Christ Jesus because no man could do these miracles that we are doing except God be with him after something you know, that he said that he had not told any other person before this is the first person that Nicodemus will say we know that you are from God a teacher from God a teacher with authority a teacher with power a teacher with revelation a teacher with understanding a teacher that has the key to the knowledge of the truth that will lead us to God and lead us to heaven after you said all that Jesus then said verily verily Whenever you see that in the New Testament, it means seriously, certainly, assuredly, without any shadow of doubt, I say unto thee, ruler of the Jews, I say unto thee, religious man, I say unto thee, Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot, and he cannot see the kingdom of God. He knew about God, he was a Pharisee. He knew about the kingdom, the kingdom that was to come. The Pharisees knew a kingdom was coming. And then they wanted to enter that kingdom. And it is not a kingdom like the kingdom on earth. It's an everlasting kingdom. It's a kingdom that will endure forever. It's up there in heaven. They wanted to enter. And now Jesus said, you know what? Except a man be born again except his soul be born again except the real man the inner man be born again except the very source of the character of man be renewed be transformed be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god nicodemus was confused he wondered i'm an old man now Am I going to enter back into my mother and then I'll be born? What's this thing about born again? Born a second time. I'm born anew. How can a man be born when he's old? 
Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And the Lord Jesus Christ was surprised that Nicodemus, a man of religion, a man of history, a man of knowledge, a man that was telling other people how to know the way of the Lord, a Pharisee fasting twice in the week, a Pharisee that seemed to know the religion coming from Moses, and he didn't understand he must be born again. And so Jesus said again, instead of changing what he said, instead of toning down what he said, because this is a necessity, and this is something indispensable, and this is something you cannot do without. If you know any other thing and every other thing, and you don't know this, you can't get to heaven. If your life is as pure as the life of an angel, if it were possible, and you don't know this, you cannot get to heaven. If you are humorous, if you are generous, if you are philanthropic, and you give money to everybody, and you help everybody in town, and you don't have this, you cannot get to heaven. And if you spend all your days in religion, every day in, uh, in the week, you consecrate it completely, you reserve it completely for religion, Religion. If you don't know this, you cannot get to heaven. And so Jesus Christ, knowing the essence of this, the importance of this, and the centrality of this, and how important this is, instead of changing what he said, after he had said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said it again, but now he's going to expand it. He's going to explain it in a way. He says in verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily. Again, he repeated that. He said, there's no shadow of doubt here. This is certain. And this is final. This is very important and essential. Verily, verily, I see unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And then Jesus not now began to say, There is the natural, there is the spiritual. The natural, you are born of the flesh. And so we can see you. You are physical. You are natural. Your mother that gave birth to you is not a spirit, it's flesh. And then you are born, what is born of the flesh is flesh. And then I'm talking about something spiritual now, something supernatural now, something different of another realm. What is born of the spirit is spirit. And then he looked at his face. He saw that it was, the confusion was still there. The surprise was still there. And he said, marvel not. Don't be confused. Don't be surprised. I don't think that this is only for little, little children to be born again. It's for adults too. It's for every man and it's for every woman. Anyone that has a desire to see the almighty God on the final day. This is very important. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And now he explains, he says, the wind bloweth. How did he bring in the wind here? You know, he just said, you must be born of water and of the spirit. And as we look at the Bible, the spirit of God is likened to the wind. And that, that's why he brought in the idea of the wind here. He says, have you felt the wind before? Of course, yes. Can you recognize when the wind is blowing? I can recognize that because I look at that tree and it's moving this way, I'm moving that way. The wind is blowing. Can you see the wind? I don't think I can see that. Do you know where the wind is coming from? I cannot tell. Do you know where the wind is going? I cannot tell. But all the same, even though I cannot see the wind, I feel it. And I sense it. And I know it. I know the wind is there. He said, that's exactly the oppression of the Spirit of God. That's why it says in verse 8, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. Then it says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. 
Nicodemus was still confused. He still didn't need to understand. I pray you'll understand. Yeah. And the Almighty God Himself will give every one of us the spirit of understanding tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Verse 9 Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Old man, to be born again, how can that be? A man that has lived his life, all his life in religion, and now to have this new concept, and this new understanding, and this new experience, how can these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master in Israel? A rabbi in Israel? A teacher in Israel? Trying to open the eyes of other people to divine truth, and yet knowest knowest not these things tonight we're looking at this study and the topic is the absolute necessity of the new birth the absolute necessity of the new birth very important essential foundational this is the very cornerstone of relationship with god of fellowship with god and of righteousness that leads us into the kingdom the absolute necessity of the new birth there are three things we're looking at as we look at the chapter as we look at the verses we have read together three things number one the unexpected confusion in the codemos the unexpected confusion of Nicodemus, the Lord was surprised, this wasn't expected, that he will not understand about the new birth, about the change that ought to have taken place in the life, in the heart of the man. And yet, he was a teacher himself, he was a leader himself, he was a ruler himself. And he was confused. And if the teacher of the Pharisees was confused, you must understand, all the other Pharisees have been leading himself, they were totally confused. They expected confusion of Nicodemus. Point number two, the universal conversion through the new birth. Universal conversion through the new birth. That's what universal means. It affects every part of man's life. It affects your heart affects your spirit affects your thoughts affects your language affects your action affects your direction affects your decisions in life affects your destiny it's a universal conversion when that new birth take, takes place it affects every part of man point number three an undeniable confirmation with newness of life and un an undeniable confirmation that is when this new birth has taken place there is a confirmation to that just like the movement of the wind just like the oppression of the wind undeniable you can see the effect you can see the oppression and you can see the moving of those trees and you can feel the essence and the movement of that wind the undeniable confirmation with newness of life we come to number one tell me number one over there unexpected confusion of Nicodemus. Let's come back to uh, John chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 1. John chapter 3, reading from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And then we're told in verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night. Stop there for a moment. You're wondering, why would a man want to seek the important knowledge of getting to heaven? And he knew that this is a teacher come from God. And he knew this is the only source of truth. If I'm going to know the truth that takes to heaven, this is the source. If I'm going to get something you know, that I can depend upon, and I would say I'm very sure of this, there's no deception here. There's no falsehood here. There's no lie here. There's no error here. This is the perfect truth that leads a man from earth to heaven. Why did he come in the night? He was thinking of his position as a ruler among the Jews. 
for me to come in the open and for me to come during the day and for other people to see me and then to say ah doesn't he know everything already doesn't he have everything already why is he going to jesus there are many people like that they sneak into the house of god there is a vacuum inside the heart there is something that tells them inside the heart that you are not complete you are not all right you know that with all the, the kind of uh, uplifting that the world is giving you, yet there is something still missing. You feel that vacuum. And you know you must get something to fill the vacuum and to fill the emptiness in you. And yet you are thinking, uh, if I come out straight, if I come out in the open, if I accept what is being said, and I do that in the open, what will people think about me? The Pharisees were in the habit of thinking about the praise of men, about the things they will get, about the things they will lose, and about what people will think about them if they had the knowledge in the open. That's why he came in the night. And then perhaps he came in the night because he himself, he was timid, afraid of people. Look at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And I'm reading here from verse 42 and verse 43. John chapter 12, verse 42, verse 43. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, rulers in the synagogue, rulers among the Jews, rulers like, like, um, like uh, Nicodemus uh, the Pharisee. It says, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. Just like Nicodemus, I know, we know that your teacher come from God. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, they did not come in the open, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Look at verse 43. For they loved the praise of men. Tell me. More than the praise of God. The people like that. They love the praise of men. More than the praise of God. They are not kind of linked to God alone. They are not putting their lives on the line. Saying whatever people think. Whatever people say. I love the Lord. I want the Lord. I want his salvation. I want that new birth. I want to be born again. And so they come timidly. They come fearfully. They come looking at what other people might say but if you're going to get to heaven it's going to be a personal decision and it's going to be a decision that you know that you're taking by yourself whatever people think about you whatever people are going to say about you you're going to say i've decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back do all men oppose me still i will follow no turning back no turning back the people of the world may try to make you ashamed and make you feel are you going to jesus are you getting born again are you deeper deeper are you one of those uh, people that want everything spiritual you say yes i am because if you're ashamed of jesus here on earth he says he'll be ashamed of you when he comes into his kingdom look at this the same came to jesus by night and said unto him rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from god for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except god be with him and it was after that the lord now revealed the essential truth unto him he looked at him you know when people come to jesus like that they may come in the night they may come in the day they may come alone they may come with other people they may come timidly or they may come courageously they may come with uh, some thoughts in their mind or they may just come with total openness whatever makes them come the lord loves them he loves the people that come unto him and as you come tonight the lord is looking at you with mercy and with love and with compassion and he wants to get you into the kingdom and i pray that tonight you will enter into the kingdom in jesus name yeah. the fear of man will not hinder you yeah. the respect and honor for men will not hinder you yeah. and then the timidity inside your own personality will not hinder you in jesus name yeah. and so jesus said in verse 3 unto him he said jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee, Nicodemus, take this, make it personal. 
Nicodemus, take this, internalize it. Nicodemus, take this, this is for you. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, you know there is God? Yes, I do. You know God has a kingdom? Yes, I do. And you know that that kingdom has a dominion? Yes, I do. And you know that that dominion has power? Yes, I do. And you know it's going to be everlasting. And once you miss it, there's no second chance. You must do something and get born again so that you have that privilege of getting to heaven. And then the Kodimus says unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? They say a fool at 40 is a fool forever. And beyond 40, I'm a ruler among the Jews. Now look at my age and look at my status. How can I go and start all over again and then begin again, be born again? At my level now, what I didn't get when I was a little boy, what I didn't get when I was a teenager, what I didn't get earlier in life, how can I do that now? You know, there are some people that tell you, that say, as old as I am now, how can I change religion? They think it's a change of religion. They said, I've been going this way all my life. How can I now turn this side now and say that I've got something new? Even my children and grandchildren, what if they are asking me that, Papa, Mama, what are you looking for again? You're a good man. You're a nice man. And you've been, you introduced us to church. You introduced us to religion. What is this new thing you are getting? Nicodemus was thinking, how can I get to that little child again and then enter into my mother and be born? And so he was confused and said, tell me about this. And an old man Enter back the second time and be born. And so he was confused. But Nicodemus had no reason to be confused. He shouldn't have been confused. This thing that is called the new birth. Number one, it is not a birth for the flesh. And so it is not to be born of your mother. Already he told you, the Lord Jesus said, Except a man be born of water and the spirit. This is not being born of the flesh. That one has happened already. And now you are here on earth. But you need to be born anew and born from above by the spirit of God. Actually, in the Old Testament, which Nicodemus should have understood, it was very clear. Look at Psalm 51. I'm reading from Psalm 51, and I'm looking at verse 5. Psalm 51, verse 5. It says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You understand this? The sin is not in the hand. The sin is not in the feet. The sin is not in the flesh. The sin is not in the tongue. That is, the tongue as a fleshly organ in your body. The sin is not in your ear and it's not in your head. The sin is in the nature. The sin is in the heart. The sin is in the spirit of man. And so, as we are born into this world, the inner man is sinful. The inner spirit is sinful. The nature is sinful. That's why he said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Look at this now. Behold, verse 6. That desire truth in the, tell me, in what part? Already the Lord told the children of Israel through Samuel. When God told Samuel, Man looketh on the outward appearance, on the flesh, your hand, how tall you are, how bulky you are, how courageous you are, on the complexion of your skin, that's outward. But then God looketh at the heart, and it is the heart that needs to be born again. It's the spirit that needs to be born again. It is the inner man that needs to be born again. It is that nature we brought into this world 
the nature that sins, the nature that is weak, the nature that is fleshly, the nature that is immoral. That's the one that needs to be renewed and reborn. That's why it says in verse 6, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part and in the hidden part. You see that? In the hidden part. The part that needs to be born again is the hidden part. That's what we are learning here. The outward part, that's not the one that is born again again for many of us who are born again you understand your heart your hands did not change your legs did not change your ear lobes did not change and the color of your hair did not change and your complexion did not change when you were born again what changed your thought changed on the inside your heart changed on the inside your spirit changed on the inside your opinions changed on the inside your character your conduct changed on the inside is the man inside it's the spirit inside that needs to be born again. That's why it says, Thou desirest truth in the inward past, and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Look at this. Purge me. Purge me. Look up here. When it says, you know, he was talking to God, and was saying, Lord, purge me. What does that mean? Does that mean that God will come from heaven and take his bath for him and wash his body? Not his body. He will do that himself. You go to the you know, bathroom yourself and you bath yourself. That's not this. The me is the inner man. The me is the spirit within. The me is the real you. He said, the me that dictates my action, that dictates my thought, that dictates the direction I go, that me Purge me with Aesop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Wash me, and tell me. Tell me out loud. Okay. When God answers that prayer, we saw David just a few hours ago, and then he goes in, and then he appeals to God and prays to God. He said, God, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And now God answers that prayer, and God washes him, and he's whiter than snow, and he comes out, and we look at him. Will the skin be whiter? No, it's not the skin. It's not the flesh. It's talking about wash me on the inside. Wash my thoughts. Wash my heart. Wash my spirit. Wash the inner man. And then the real me will be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out how many, how many iniquities? All my iniquities. Look at this now. Verse 10. Tell me out loud. Verse 10. That's the point. That's the being born again. Create inside me a clean heart. It says, I know my heart is unclean. How do I know that? My thoughts are clean. How do I know that? My imagination is unclean. How do I know that? Because everything on the inside and the voice I'm hearing from the inside is telling me and pushing me to do some unclean things. I know it's unclean. Therefore, my prayer is this. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. It's the inner man we're talking about. When it says ye must be born again, it is the you on the inside it is the you your personality it is the you your spirit it is the you your inner man that is going to be born again and then it says in verse uh, in verse 12 restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy true spirit with thy free spirit you see david david knew about being born again that's why jesus was surprised at nicodemus have you read Psalm 51? What do you see there? Is he not talking about the inner man? The spirit? Your soul? Your thoughts? Everything becoming new? And then David mentions something. Else. Look at this, verse 13. He says, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. Look up for a moment. He says, I'm a king. 
being the king does not give me the license or liberty or authority or privilege to teach sinners. It says, I am a knowledgeable person. Being a knowledgeable person does not give me the chance to teach other people. Put it in our language that you can understand. Being a personal position does not give me the right to teach Sunday school. You see, there are many, there are some churches that, those churches, if somebody comes to that church and the fellow knows a little bit of grammar, he's gone to secondary school and he can put, a, a, you know, something together, the subject and the whatever, put everything to make his sentence. They say, come on now, you can teach uh, this class. We'll give you this class. No, knowing grammar does not give him uh, the right to be a Sunday school teacher. And then sometimes that fellow is a manager in his place of work, a director in his place of work, and he comes in. They say he knows administration, and he knows uh, about counseling. He knows about, he's a boss in his place of work, he's a director. Well, the knowledge he has, uh, of course, if you read the Bible, it's in English, you can read the Bible. If you have studied uh, those great, great subjects, and you understood that, you can understand the Bible. Therefore, come and teach other people. No, sir, he can't do that because, you see, David did not say, I'm a king, I can be a teacher. I mean, I'm a boss, therefore I can be a preacher. He said, first of all, create in me a clean heart, O God. Rest renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Then, after that, will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall what? Tell me out loud. Sinners shall be converted unto thee. There are many people that think that conversion is a late doctrine. Conversion is, you know, something that came after, after, after. This is conversion here. The conversion of a sinner that's been born again. That is, it's been a sinner, is of the flesh. And when you say you convert something, what's conversion? You know, sometimes some of us, and we know that we we'll take those scraps of paper and then we we'll pass it through a particular process. And now we have a toilet rolls that we we'll keep that were we'll brought out of those uh, wait, uh, wasted uh, paper. What's that conversion? We converted that thing you know, into something new, something different. When somebody was of the flesh. And now is to be of the spirit. The process that gets him from the flesh to the spirit, that's the conversion. And in the Old Testament, it was already there. I will teach those sinners, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's the being born again. That's why Jesus was surprised and said, Nicodemus, you read the Old Testament and you don't understand what it means to be born again, what it means to be born of the Spirit. Let's look at this. Isaiah, I'm reading from verse chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, and we're reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 53. Tell me the verse. Verse 11, it says, He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. This chapter 53 of Isaiah is talking about Jesus Christ, about our Savior, about our Redeemer, about the one that has the power to change our lives. We cannot change ourselves just like a child cannot give birth to himself. The same way, you cannot give birth to yourself. It takes the spirit of God and the power of God to come and make that change. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant, what's the word there? Justify many. Look at that. Justify many. What does that mean? Justification by faith. Many people think justification by faith. The just shall lay by faith. They say it's a later doctrine. No, it's here already. In Isaiah, in the Old Testament, somebody is guilty. Because he's guilty, he ought to be judged. And then he ought to be imprisoned. He ought to suffer punishment. 
and if he's not if something is not done the punishment the imprisonment will be forever and ever and then here comes the servant of the lord i don't mean a preacher i mean jesus christ the anointed of the lord and it takes hold of him and he takes away his sin because all our sins are laid upon him and now he is justified what does that mean all his guilt is gone all his condemnation is gone he's free in the heart if the son shall make you free he shall be free indeed and now he's removed from the place and the and the population of the guilty people is transferred over here and god looks at him as if he has never sinned in his life that's me born again and it's in the old testament and it says by by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities and that's what the lord was saying will happen unto them we're coming to jeremiah chapter 31 jeremiah chapter 31 as a pharisee nicodemus should have read everything we're reading in the old testament because they read the old testament very much uh, those uh, pharisees but then they didn't understand jeremiah chapter 31 and i'm reading from verse 31 31 31 look at this behold the days come says the lord i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah not according to the covenant that i made with their fathers in the day that i took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of egypt and then it says with my covenant the break although i was an husband unto them says the lord but this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel look at this after those days says the lord i will tell me i will put my law in there that's the part to be born again it's not i'll put my law in their hands no i'll put my law in their feet no i write my law on their clothes no i'll put it on their forehead no i'll put that law in their inward parts and write it in their tell me in their heart that's the being born again that is somebody had been going to church and all he had was the ten commandments on the stone on the tables of stone and every time and then you might preach it on a sheet of paper and then put it on the wall but it's outside and then when he when temptation comes he forgets because he's not born again because he's a man of the flesh a woman of the flesh everything about god everything about the righteousness everything about religion is external on the tables of stone on the wall on the clothes or whatever but now god says I'm going to take your heart and I'm going to write my law in your heart so that you will not be forgetting and then the strength of the word will be in your heart your inward parts and your inner man and your spirit will then become renewed look at that verse 33 again but they shall be the covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord I will put my law in their in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their god and they shall be my people uh, that's uh, that's what the lord said they will do and that is the new birth and i pray it will happen to everyone we're looking at ezekiel ezekiel chapter 11 ezekiel chapter 11 and we're reading here from verse 17. Ezekiel 11, verse 17. Therefore say, thus says the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. Somebody to say amen over there. Amen. And it says, and they shall come see them, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from this look at this and i will give them tell me look up here look up here you know when we're born of the flesh 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 
you went to school, that school, I went to school, this school, you went to school, that school, you went to school, different places. And then we come together and we live in society. You know, even though we have gone to school, you're different from me. I'm different from you. And your action is different from mine. And my thoughts are different from yours. You know why? What is born of the flesh is flesh. And therefore, will be behaving differently. Whatever my mind tells me, I do. Whatever your mind tells you, you do. But now, God says, I'm going to do something. I'm going to, you're not going to go to the school of men. I'm going to get you to my own school. And it says in verse 19, I will give them one heart. I'll give them the same understanding. I'm going to renew every one of them. I'm going to change the heart of every one of them and we will look similar. And then the way I'm thinking is the way you are thinking. And the direction I'm going is the direction you are going. And what I believe is what you believe. And what I love is what you love. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual path that only God can do this. I pray God will do it in every one of us. I will give them one heart and I will put in new spirit within you and i will take out the i take away the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them what a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them and they shall be my people and i will be their god ezekiel chapter 36 ezekiel Chapter 36, and we're reading from verse 25. Been born again, been born again. The inner man changed, the inner man renewed, the inner man transformed. And Nicodemus should have read all this, but he didn't understand. I pray God will give us the spirit of understanding. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25. In verse 25, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. Hold on, hold on. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. This is the Almighty God Himself talking. And you remember now, many people they don't understand. Uh, God does not come to take our bath for us every morning. That's, it's not talking about washing our flesh, washing our head, like mothers wash their little babies, like uh, you know, parents or guardians wash their little ones. It's not talking about that. It's talking about wanting to wash us on the inside. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can take away all that stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's what it says. It says, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. It's an inner cleansing. It's a spiritual cleansing. That's what. That's why it is called being born again. Because you become totally new. Look at verse twenty-six. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. When God does that. What a change, a mighty change that comes upon us. And so when Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, Jesus expected that Nicodemus would understand because you have all these references in the Old Testament that the inner man needs to be born again. And a new nature needs to come into us. And when that new nature comes, life will be totally different. We'll come to point number two. Point number two, a universal conversion through the new birth. A universal conversion through the new birth. We're coming back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. We're looking at verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, certainly, certainly, assuredly, I say unto thee. Hold on for a moment. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Nicodemus, what I'm telling you now is true on earth, is true in heaven. Nicodemus, what I tell you now, nothing will change this. An angel cannot change this. What I'm telling you now 
Eternity cannot modify this one. This is an eternal truth that is true from generation to generation. Nicodemus, verily, verily, assuredly, without any possibility of an angel from anywhere changing this, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus didn't understand. But you know, if you're going to understand, look at that word, except. Everybody uh, tell me, except. Jesus said, except this happens, this cannot happen. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in verse 5, it says in verse 5, except a man be born of, now he expands it, of water and of the spirit, he cannot see, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The same thing. But look at that thing, except. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, we're reading from verse 20. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 20, here is Jesus talking. And you want to understand this language. The way he used the word, except. He says, for I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, he shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. The same thing. Except your righteousness will exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. You cannot enter, you cannot get to the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. What's the righteousness of the Pharisees? Righteousness of the Pharisees, they washed their pots, they washed their utensils, they counted that as righteousness. They washed their clothes, they counted that as righteousness. They made white the sepulcher, the tomb, they counted that as righteousness. And they made themselves beautiful and nice, righteous, outwardly. They counted that as religion. But inwardly, their hearts were dirty. Their hearts were full of extortion. Their hearts were full of evil things, abominable things. And Jesus said, you Pharisees, cleanse that which is inward. So that you will be truly and totally clean. Understand that the righteousness which is external, the righteousness which is outward, cannot save you, cannot get you to heaven. That's what he was telling them. That's why he said, except your righteousness shall go beyond, shall exceed shall go deeper into your inward soul, into your inward heart, except that righteousness will be inward. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If the heart is not pure, whatever outward religion you have, whatever outward manifestation of religion you may have, you cannot get to the kingdom of God. Telling us then, with this being born again, it's an inward thing. It's an internal thing. So that we will have the righteousness of the heart. We're coming to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. You understand what he's saying? Except, except, except this happens, that cannot happen. Except you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Except there's a change on the inside. A transformation on the inside. Except the blood of Jesus or wash and cleanse you on the inside, you cannot get to the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 13, look at verse 3. We're looking for the word except. What, are, what word are we looking for? 
Look at this. Chapter 13, verse 3. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall not likewise perish. You understand that now? When it says you must be born again, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Put it another way. Except a man repents and totally turns away from sin, and the inward heart is cleansed, he cannot get to the kingdom of God. Look at verse, uh, verse 5. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And so he's talking about repentance. Total repentance, total regeneration, and total transformation of heart and life, because once the heart is changed, and once the heart is transformed, then life becomes righteous and life becomes totally committed unto the Lord. We're coming to Matthew chapter 18, except, except Matthew chapter 18. I'm reading here from verse 3. Matthew chapter 18, we're coming to verse 3. Look at this. And search, verily I say unto you, what's the next word there? Tell me out loud except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven now you understand when you put everything together except a man be born again he cannot enter into the kingdom of god i don't understand that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees you cannot get to the kingdom of heaven I don't fully understand. Except you repent, you shall likewise perish all. Then I, now you understand. And now he says, except ye be converted. That is, the inner man is changed. The inner man is transformed. The inner man is renewed. And as a total change from within, except ye be converted and become as little children, he shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. The same thing. And so you see what the Lord is saying. We must be born again. We must have a new life. And that new life will be ours totally, completely in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, we're looking at verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more honest seed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which had the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. He wants us to be totally transformed. He wants us to be born again. He wants a new life to be in us. A new disposition in us. A new direction of life in us. And a new decision that changes our destiny. And as we give ourselves totally un unreservedly to the Lord, that change will come in Jesus' name. We're looking at First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. Looking at verse 3. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again. That's the same thing. Born again, begotten again. Has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You see that? And that gives us a new hope. And that gives us the hope of getting to heaven. Because we are born again now. Because there is a change in our heart. A change in the inner man. A change in the direction of our life. We now have the hope of heaven. Look at verse 23. In verse 23. Verse 23. Are you there? Tell me the first three words there. Wonderful. Being born again. You see Peter never forgot. Peter never forgot. Anybody following Jesus Christ must always remember, must always remember, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. Apostle, 
Except an apostle be born again. And a lay reader, except a lay reader be born again. A bishop, except a bishop be born again. A minister, a leader, a preacher, a prophet, except a preacher, except a prophet, and except a bishop be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It is for everyone, except there's a renewal on the inside, a conversion on the inside, a change on the inside, except that change happens, we cannot get to the kingdom of God. So whether it is Peter or it is John or it is Nicodemus or it is Matthew or it is Mary or it is Josephine, any other person, you must be born again. Whether it's deeper life or baptism, we must be, tell me born again. Look at verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Liveth and abideth forever. We're coming to John, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 29. First John chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 29. It says, if we know that he is righteous, look at this, we know that everyone that doeth righteousness, tell me, is born of him. And that's the evidence we are born again. We cannot see your heart. God can see your heart, but we can see your life. We can see that now there's a righteousness that goes beyond the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. It's not just an external righteousness. You know some people, they behave well when we are all together. You know some people, they behave right. A brother is around. I don't want a brother to know that, you know, I still fight. I don't want his sister to know that I still get angry. But so I will behave myself now because uh, our church people are around. But when our church people are not around, they behave anyhow. They are not righteous and they are not born again. When somebody is born again, he has that nature everywhere. It's like when you are born of the flesh. If you are a man, you are a man everywhere. If you are a lady, you are a lady everywhere. You don't change that when everybody is around, you are a lady. And then when we are not around, you are a man. No, if you are a man, you are a man. And the same thing if you are born again. If your spirit is born again. If your inner man is born again. If your heart is transformed. Whether you are in church or you are in the office. Whether you are in the family or you are in the market. A born again person is always a born again person. That's why it says in that verse 29. And you know that uh, ye know that he is righteous. If we know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness, you will do righteousness. Your life will be righteous. And your life will glorify God. And that shows and gives the evidence that you are born again. Thank God I'm born again. I say thank God I'm born again. If you are born again, you know, it will be a new life. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, therefore, if any man, any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, say it confidently now. All things have become new. He is born again. He is born anew. He is born of the Spirit. He is born from above. He is born by the power of the Lord. Because of that, things are different now. We're coming back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, see what the Lord Jesus told Nicodemus. And let's learn from this. I'm looking at verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. When he said born of water, already you know now, it's not the water in the bathroom. This is the water of the word of God. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And here we're reading from verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5. Reading from verse 26. It says in verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water. Tell me the rest. 
by the word is the water of the word. The, the word of God acts like water. And that's what Jesus said. He are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And then it says in that John chapter 3 verse 5, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. And of the spirit. You see the spirit of God is the operating agent. The transforming agent. And the transforming power that comes upon our lives and it cleanses us and washes us on the inside. That's why it says, by the spirit and by the and by the word. Look at verse 6, John chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. What does that mean? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Look at verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? That is, those who are born of the flesh, they have not been born again. And Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. This is what will happen. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in, the, in, past, in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All those who are still of the flesh, that's what they do. And then the second part of what Jesus said, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. What does that mean? Look at verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections and the laws thereof. And so you understand what Jesus Christ has said and he said, marvel not Nicodemus, marvel not my friend over there, marvel not that man, that woman, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And if you come to the Lord, the Lord will do it. He specializes in combustion. He specializes in transformation. He wants to do it for us because he wants us to get to the kingdom of God. He wants us to be in heaven at last. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died on the cross of Calvary. And if you repent, you turn away from your sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be converted, shall be born again. Born again, born again, I am born again. I said I am born again. I pray it will happen to everyone in Jesus' name. When we are born again, what's the confirmation? When we are born again, what's the evidence? When we are born again, what can we see that we'll be able to tell? I've been watching that a friend is born again. How do you know that? I've been watching, I've been watching uh, that uh, lady. I know she is born again. How can you tell? Point number three now. An undeniable confirmation with newness of life. An undeniable confirmation with newness of life. We're coming to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit. You see, it tells us this. Look up here, number one. It says, you see the wind? Because he wants to go from the concrete to the spiritual. He wants to go from the natural to the supernatural. He wants to go from the known, what you already know, to what is not known. And he says, you know the wind? If there were no wind, there would be no life. You know the wind is because the wind is blowing. Then you are able to even take in some of the, some of that air, and then you escape. You escape. That's the thing that gives you life. If there is no wind, if everything is chill and the wind is not there, the world will go to sleep, and the world will eventually just vanish away and die. But it's wind that brings the life, and it says, "Look at the wind." 
You don't know where it's coming from. The source is from God, the creator. And you don't know where it's going. The direction is by the creator. The destiny is by the creator. But then when it passes you and it blows on you, like when the fan is blowing, you can see the fan, but you cannot see the wind that the fan is blowing. But you feel the effect in your body. It says it's the same thing that that wind of the spirit, the power of the spirit, the washing of the spirit, the cleansing of the spirit, the oppression of the spirit will blow on you and every dirty thing he will blow away. Every defiling thing he will blow away. And refreshing will come. A new life will come because of the wind that blows. And it says so is everyone that is born of the spirit is telling us something. You are born again in the east. You are born again in the west. You are born again in the north. Will be the same. Because so is everyone that is born of God. The wind blows here. We feel it. Has the same effect as when it blows in another country. As when it blows in the west. Or it blows in India. Anywhere the wind is blowing, it has the same effect. Anywhere there is a born again child of God. Whether it's in America or it's in Africa. Whether it's in West Africa or it's in Southern Africa. It's the same thing because it says so is everyone that is born of God. You know there are some people that say I'm born again. But my being born again is not your type. You know, your own type of born again, born again is righteousness and holiness and purity of heart. My own kind of being born again is I just, you know, I just love God. I just love God. About righteousness, really, I don't do it about that. No, you are not born again. Born again experience is the same everywhere. Look at that verse again. It's very clear. How are you going to deceive yourself and then have counterfeit experience that doesn't take anybody to heaven? The wind blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, and canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. Tell me the rest. Read it confidently. Now read it properly. Praise the Lord. So it's everyone, everyone, everyone that is born of the Spirit. If we're born of the Spirit, our lives will tally with the Word of God, will agree with the Word of God. And then our character, our behavior will agree with the Word of God because it says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Let's see some people who are born of the Spirit. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 41. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them. How many people? There were 3,000 souls. Now look up here. 3,000 souls. And you say, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. 3,000, number one, number two, number three, up to 100, up to 1,000, up to 2,000, up to 3,000. They were born again. And what was the thing evident in their lives? And what was the clear testimony in their lives? So that this one is not saying, well, I'm born again, but you know, you are different. You are born again, but I'm different. Look at them in verse 42. And they continue steadfastly. The same characteristics, the same character, the same conduct, the same lifestyle, the same newness of life, the same commitment, the same consideration, and the same conversion that are taking place in them. And they had this uniform experience. It's not like, you know, I'm born again, but I don't like going to church. I'm born again, but I don't like reading the Bible. I'm born again, but I don't like obeying the Lord. I'm born again, but I'm, I cannot leave my old girlfriend and my old boyfriend. I'm born again, but you know, I cannot drop my smoking. No, if you're born again, you don't even love those things anymore. Because so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in and in prayers. And then 
then it goes on to say, look at verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, tell me the rest, such as should be saved. Added to the church. Added to the church. Not that you know you are isolated somewhere afar there. You never identify with the church. You are not integrated with the church. I'm born again. I'm born again. You are not there. But you know, if you are born again, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Born of God. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 35. Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does me, what does hinder me to be baptized? The man said, I've heard about Jesus. I believe in Jesus. Now I'm born again. I have a new life. I want to obey the Lord. How about me being baptized in water? You know, there are some people, you tell them that, you know, here is what the word of God says. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is, tell me, baptized shall be saved. And you show them the word of God. You show them very clearly. This is what God said. And he said, mm, I'm thinking about I don't think I want to do that yet because if I do that, that means I'm giving an open testimony that my infant baptism is uh, worthless and now I say I'm born again I want to. They begin to argue. No, they are not born again. If you are born again, you want to be eager. To obey the word of the Lord. I read that in the word of God. I want to obey that. And God will give you that spirit of obedience in Jesus name. He said, Philip, preacher, here is water. What hinders me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the channel to stand still. And they went down both into the water. And both Philip and the eunuch, and they baptized him. Look at this. And when they were come up out of the water, uh, the Spirit of God, the Lord caught away Philip, and that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way, tell me the word, Rejo the joy of salvation. He went on his way rejoicing, and the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 30. Acts chapter 16. We're looking at verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He brought them out. That is the Philippian jailer. And he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they were told in verse 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, tell me, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. And to all that were in his house. Look at this. And he took them the same hour of the night. You see, these were prisoners. But now they were his preachers. These were prisoners. They were now his pastors. These were prisoners. They were now his teacher. The teacher, teachers of the word of God. And then uh, they told him what to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved and thy house. And when that happened, look at the change. There's always an inward change. There's always a transformation, a change of character, a change of conduct, a change of lifestyle, a change in your disposition, a change in your thought, a change in your destiny. If you're really born again, look at them here. Remember, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And it tells us in verse 33, and it took them the same hour of the night, and they washed their stripes these prisoners and he, and he was baptized and he and all his straightway look at verse 34 and when uh, they brought them into his house he took them away from the prison he said now we're brothers together we're members of the same family of God together and they have been feeding them with uh, food that was not uh, good enough in the prison so he brought them into his house and he set meat before them and rejoiced believing in 
in God with all his house. There's no doubt when you see something like that, you know that those people were born again. And I pray this new birth will be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. Remember, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. There's no difference. You're born again, and He is born again. Your life will glorify God. Your life will reflect the character of the person that is born again. Acts chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds many of them also which use curious as brought their books together and bunched them before all men and they counted the price of them and found the eight fifty thousand pieces of silver they had been using magical acts or cultic things and then when they became born again they said i forsake satan somebody there i forsake satan i forsake occultism I can't hear you. I forsake idol worship. I forsake masquerades. I forsake sick society. That's, that's what they did. That's what they did. And remember, and so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And then he tells us in verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. First Thessalonians chapter 1. In First Thessalonians chapter 1, the change that comes, the transformation that comes, because the wind blows and you can feel it. You can't see it, but you can see the oppression. You can see the action of that wind. And so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in what only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as she know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. And ye became, so it's everyone that is born of the Spirit, and ye became a change had happened, transformation had happened, and ye became the followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we were, um, what manner of entering in we urge unto you and how ye turned to God from what? From idols to do what? To serve the living and true God. Remember, and so is everyone that is born of the Spirit and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. When you are born again, the judgment eternal, it will pass over you. Amen. You are not the judge eternal anymore because now you are born again. Thank God I'm born again. I say thank God I'm born again. First John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the church. What? He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God, tell me, tell me out loud. If you are sure, say it again. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Remember, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Chapter 5 of First John. First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. He will not touch you again. Amen. If his temptation comes, he will say, no. I'm born again. 
I'm born again. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. And because you are born of the word, that's the water, and of the spirit, he gives you strength. He, give you, he gives you ability. And he gives you the courage to go back to that same office, to go back to that same market, to go back to that same school. And now you're a different person because something has happened on the inside of you. We're going to talk to the Lord in prayer. We're going to say, oh Lord, make it real in my life. Make it real in my life. So that as the wind blows and people can see the effect, people who look at me, people who see me, they will see the effect of the new birth in my life. Newness of life, newness of character, and newness of behavior, newness in every way possible. Oh Lord, turn me around. Make me a new creature indeed. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.